Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast with Dylan and Akram. For this episode, we are reviewing Evil Dead Rise, the latest remake or reboot, soft reboot in the Evil Dead series. Uh, Akram, why don't we start with your thoughts? I thought it was awesome, man. I, I, it has a similar tone to the other one, the 2013 and 2014 Evil Dead. I'm not sure on the time, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought also the setting is really interesting. It took place in an apartment complex. That was awesome. I think the cast too. There's a lot of newcomers here, um, so kudos to them. I think they did a brilliant job, uh, and it sure was a gore fest. Uh, but of course, Ellie, played by Alyssa Sutherland, she, man, she nailed the role. She was so creepy, <laughs> so disturbing. Really disturbing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, I think I think it's going to be iconic in the Evil Dead um, mm. franchise. But what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, it wasn't my cup of tea per se. I feel like the Evil Dead series kind of goes way over the top sometimes. I did enjoy the Ash vs. Evil Dead uh, series on Showtime. Um, it's actually a shame that, you know, they got canceled, but... Um, this was an interesting reboot, I guess. Yeah, the 2013 one uh, was kind of similar. It went, uh, they were way into the, the gore uh, behind the movie. Um, this one was kind of similar and it was, I, I went to see it with my friend and it was actually like, I had to cover my eyes a couple of times. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was just like some, some moments are just like too much for me to handle. Um, and this is from somebody who watches like the boys or like really graphic shit. Um, but I think it was too much for me to stomach, but nonetheless, I think it's a great addition to the franchise. No, I do too. And I, and I like what they're doing. I, I like the little intro too, cause the intro goes, it actually shows up at the end. So I, I find how they did that was clever. Um, yeah, the beginning was definitely like, Oh shit. With the ponytail thing. That mm-hmm. was like, Oh my God. Um, yeah, I mean, it is over the top, of course, but that's what you expect from Evil Dead. And so I, I thought this was like, it was a welcome addition to the family of mm-hmm. other stuff. Um, I like Beth. I like her character a lot. Um, I like what's going on that she's like pregnant. And, and it's it's kind of really interesting how, in a way, she has to adopt these kids like mm-hmm. because As she the mother is gone. Yeah, right. because and they have to get out of there. I, I thought like the deaths were really brutal. I was like, oh, my yeah. goodness. A lot of people like I was like fucking like closing my eyes like the whole time. Yeah, a, a lot of people got possessed in this. Mo- mostly everyone except two characters got possessed in this movie. I was like, oh, geez. And they all like died horrible deaths and, and mm-hmm. they're going to like burn in hell. I thought that was like, oh, my God. Thinking about that now is like, wow, that's horrible. It's fucking gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that also. Show, it adds to the experience of like we need to get out of here because our bodies aren't just in trouble it's our souls mm. as well so um the apartment co- so this takes place i think in los angeles and uh, we don't get much of the outside world except apart from the beginning so it, it wasn't super claustrophobic believe it or not this movie it was just uh there was a lot of dialogue a lot of people just reacting to what's happening um again ellie the character played by Alyssa sutherland um she has to nail the role because she was the main deadite right. for like majority of the movie. Mm. Um, I like also, I think it's called the Necromonicon. I'm, Necronomicon. I'm sorry if I'm butchering yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I like how I, I wonder if they're going to bring this up in later iter- iterations because there's now pictures of uh, like demons or like uh, people getting possessed mm. and it looks like kind of like, um, it's almost like a game. It's almost like yeah. Squid Games where they show like this is the game or something. So I, I I like how they implemented that in this movie, and I wonder if we'll see that in other iterations, like newer designs. Yeah, I I actually did like that they kind of expand on the lore a little bit in this. Um, so it was, it was like well now apparently there's three books. Um, I think there was like different ones in each adaption, and this one there was kind of like a history behind it too. Like apparently they were locked in this bank, and there was like these priests that we're trying to uh, use the power of the book or something. Um, but they had like horrible deaths. And I like the the inclusion of the, the vinyl disc. I thought that was yeah. an inter- interesting way of them to kind of summon the demons, right? Because mm-hmm. most of the time when I'm watching Evil Dead, I was like, why would you fucking like, like chant this shit, right? Mm-hmm. But here it's like they have no choice, right? Once the record's on, it starts playing. And it's like they don't have a choice, right? It's like on on repeat, and then you hear it through the the speaker, 
and it's just so like disturbing and it's like so loud and then you of course you see like the point of view from like the demon spirit as, as the classic mm. evil that is they did do some like tropes from the series as well like of course the chainsaw is obvious um but the, the beginning where she's actually reading from the book uh that's actually a throwback uh, i think to the first movie when she was kind of like reading her cards so i thought mm. that was a little interesting like tidbit but yeah, the deaths were like, yeah, they <laughs> were so gruesome. Um, man, I, the eyeball shit got me when uh, <laughs> when the neighbor like swallowed the eyeball. And then when she like when she swallowed the glass, I, I cringed so hard <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. I, I mean, you know, kudos to the, you know, audio department and the effects. You know, they went, you know, hard in this movie. Um, it's just it's so over the top, but it's so ambitious, right? You never you never see that, you know, in in most even like rated R movies, uh, nowadays tend to be more tame. But now it feels mm-hmm. like it, this was like if if you want gore, this is the movie to go to. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, I also what I like is that I, of course there's a lot of fake elements, but I like that because you would think, okay, let me not read this because things are becoming a little more ominous. So or let me not play this, but. The book is compelling the the electronics and stuff to mm, actually just yeah. keep playing it, mm-hmm. so it doesn't stop no matter what you do. So I like that 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 adds to I guess I want to say realism, but it, it makes a lot more sense. Um, and yeah, I think what's interesting is all the deadites they converge into one being, and yeah. so it's like this monster kind of yeah. yeah it, it reminds me of Rat King from the Last of Us, if you guys know what I mm-hmm. mean. And it's like um, just this big monster. I think that was really interesting how they did that. Um, I never seen that before in the Evil Dead property. Mm. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I think they're trying to go for disturbing, even more disturbing. So, I mean, I could see like a sequel of a lot yeah. more people getting possessed and then they're like zombies or something. The know? Necronomicon too was kind of interesting in the design. It had like teeth and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of reminded me of the the puzzle cube from the new Hellraiser. Oh, yeah. Where it was like it, like it stabs you and then they get your blood. I thought that was so right. interesting. And the pages are like, you know, human skin. But I think the like the depictions of the drawings and how they kind of like uh like adapted that into real life. I thought that was really mm-hmm. interesting. Like they were kind of mm-hmm. like like torn out of the page. I thought it was so like dark too. Like I, I <laughs> there really is like no hope for escape in these kind of movies. I mean, mm-hmm. I they even they took some of the kids with them in this movie too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt bad for like the the older sister and the, and the younger brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a feeling the the younger kid was gonna get out of it because it was like I, that would have been too much for me if all the kids uh died and became deadites um, um well the one of the like one of the neighbors one of the kids i didn't expect that got his arms ripped off oh yeah that shit was nasty <laughs> i could too. see it <laughs> everybody on that floor died um i was wondering like did anybody else hear that on, on the floor above or like below like the shotgun being shot right. and, and stuff like that um but yeah, I mean, their only way of escape was through this elevator. The stairway is gone because there was this earthquake. Um, so that also made sense. So like they set it up well enough where like you could believe it and, mm-hmm. and it's easier to suspend your disbelief. Um, that was a lot of blood to an elevator. I heard they had like thousands of, of gallons of blood, fake blood. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting to see the, the girl and uh, Beth and Cassie be just completely covered with that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, the movie, the movie, I think is pretty solid. Uh, I think it, it, it yeah it pretty much it feels like it takes itself seriously but i i think it warrants it especially with how they conducted a lot of the characters and how frightening it it actually was pretty frightening i never thought Mm -hmm. evil dead was super frightening i was thought it was just disturbing um and you know sam raimi he does a lot of campy uh but this one was actually pretty frightening and then the idea of like the family dying and they're trapped like they're screwed they're in hell that adds to the element of fear and I wonder if we'll see these characters again, like Beth and Cassie in the future. Mm-hmm. I would hope so. I wonder if they're going to lead um, in the future to come. I mean, or maybe that's how it is. Maybe it's just like the book goes like to different places. Like imagine this thing in place in a mall mm. and like some, and like it's playing over the speaker and a lot of people get possessed right. and it's kind of like Dawn of the Dead, but inside. Mm-hmm. Um, that's horrifying. So I think they have a good idea to play with it. And I also like the director. Um, the director is, Lee, Lee Cronin, Cronin. Yeah. yeah and he it looks like he specializes I'm not familiar with his work too much but it looks like he specializes in the horror movie so I'd like to see him make a return mm-hmm. for a possible sequel but yeah yeah I was I, I was kind of hoping they would kind of bring the campiness back because I feel like the 2013 remake was a little too dark for me uh, I oh. kind of wanted to bring that you know element of humor that Sam Raimi had but nonetheless I think this is a great 
soft reboot and you know had a lot of compelling characters that i i didn't hate um uh, maybe the the younger kid the the son when he uh when he found the book i was like you stupid motherfucker <laughs> like i would have mm-hmm. left that shit where it was but no I, I think the characters were fine and yeah like the the sister like beth i thought she was great i'm glad that she made it out and hopefully we could see her in a potential sequel or we get you know great new characters as well but yeah um shout out to Alyssa Sutherland. i thought she was horrifying as as ellie and as you know the zombie mom i thought she was great on screen and her performance and her you know, her facial expressions were just so on point you know it just it was really terrifying yeah yeah what would you rate this movie uh personally i'd probably give it seven out of ten it's not my cup of tea but i think it's nonetheless a great you know adaption a great element to the horror franchise how about you Okay. Yeah, I think I'll give it a nine out of ten. I I don't like campy things. I mean, um, but I I like what they did here. I think it's a refreshing take on Evil Dead, and you still have the Bruce Campbell uh series that I know it's canceled, but if they ever want to make a return, and plus you have the video game from Army of Darkness, Mm -hmm. um, led by the people I think who did the Friday the Thirteenth game. Um, so for the most part, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I think I'm not a big fan of gore, but I think this is where you'll expect to see a lot of gore, you know. So that's that's in the DNA of Evil Dead. So for the most part, pretty great job. I can't wait to see a sequel iteration. But that is our review for Evil Dead Rise. Now you could rent it again. Sorry, we're late to the party, <laughs> but this is our review, guys. If you like this video, please like this video. We say this every time, so please actually like this video. It'll greatly help us out. We're reaching 400. We're super excited because the more and more subscribers we reach you guys are also growing with us because we're growing as a channel and you're going to see our progression and you're going to see a lot more cool and ambitious things to come but dylan why don't you take us away yeah guys thank you for all your support if you have anything you want us to review any movies or tv shows you like you know comment below let us know how we're doing as a podcast um check us out wherever you listen to your podcast platforms on anchor apple Podcasts, and spotify as well and of course you can check out our instagram tag in our video description but thank you guys so much and until then thanks for having lunch with us and remember don't read the words i'll see you guys